What's going on everybody? CFC DP back with our second match preview of the season. Chelsea versus Tottenham. A huge London derby. Going to be at Stamford Bridge, the first home game of the year. We got a lot to cover, so let's get into it. Okay, so just a bit of a recap of what happened last week. Chelsea defeated Everton 1-0 on a penalty from Jorginho. And Tottenham beat Southampton 4-1. It was kind of the tale of two performances from these teams. Um, we'll start with Chelsea. Chelsea were kind of working out the kinks. And after a kind of a subpar preseason, you would expect that from the Blues. Um, now, we did see a lot of things that Chelsea are going to be working on and implementing throughout the season. And that's going to work with the fluid front, with Raheem Sterling playing a more central number nine role um, because Kai Havertz on his heat map, and you could tell throughout the game, was playing left wing, was playing right wing, and it was a bit of a fluid front. So I would expect the same front three for the game, um, that being Sterling, Kai, and Mason Mount. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if we did perhaps see Christian Pulisic start over Mason Mount. Um, it's for sure a possibility because when Pulisic came on last week, he looked very good um, in terms of energy, really pressing the ball well, and on a countless times we saw Thomas Tuchel doing the sleeping thing over there, and I believe he was pointing at Mason Mount, who he wasn't very impressed with during that game. So it's probably going to be Pulisic um, or Mason Mount. So that's going to be the kind of the top three. And we'll see if we can get a little bit more um, energy. The fans will surely be pushing the guys to work a little bit harder um, and try to be a little bit more decisive. I think the more games that this group gets underneath them, they will be able to handle that and, and work um, towards being a little bit more consistent. But we said the same thing last year, so I don't really know. So the, the window may have some twists and turns for us, but as far as I know, um, these guys will try and get better and they'll work harder and hopefully a little bit of chemistry will build um, over the season. Tottenham, on the other hand, looked like a well-oiled machine. And the kind of early thoughts are that Spurs is probably going to be a much more fit team than Chelsea. Playing a couple more preseason games, um, Conte relentlessly works his players, so you know they're in shape, and they looked really good. They went down um, on a, off of a James Ward-Prowse goal, and then they really carried on um, and really took control of the game from there. Sessegnon had um, two goals, Kulisevsky had a goal. Um, it, it was really an impressive offensive showing, um, but... That Southampton's defense and Chelsea's defense is definitely a lot more seasoned and more stout than they are. Um, in terms of Chelsea's defense, we'll have to see how it breaks down. Thiago Silva and Koulibaly are the first two names in the team sheet, in my opinion, in terms of the defense. But then that right center back position is something that we might have to consider. Wesley Fofana is not a Chelsea player. He's not a Chelsea player yet, at least. Aspilicueta might be... Put there, I don't think he would do that well against Sun. So you might see Reese James slide back into right center back, and you may see Ruben Loftus Cheek play a right wing back role um, as he's been kind of growing into that position for Chelsea since kind of the middle of last year when he kind of got healthy and found a form. So I think Ruben might be playing that right wing back position, um, and then it'll be interesting to see how we work with the midfield. Um, I, I believe that we will see Kovacic for sure will be there, and then Conte or Jorginho will be kind of a toss-up in my opinion. Um, I will say probably Conte. I, I still don't know, um, but it'll be tough to see uh, and see how those players um, work against um, a Tottenham team that really likes to take turn the ball over in the midfield. So if Chelsea can keep strong possession in the midfield and not turn it over, um, I think they'll be in good shape. The reason why I'm kind of leaning on Jorginho being out of the squad is because he's pretty weak in terms of build-up play, of turning it over, and if fouls aren't called, um, Anthony Taylor's the ref, we're going to be in trouble and Tottenham's going to be going the other way with numbers. We, we, can't, we just can't have that. Uh, wing backs, Ruben Lotz's cheek, and then I think Cucurella's actually going to get the start at left wing back. 
Um, I think Chelsea are prepared to put either guy there. Um, ben has been working really hard. We're going to see both of them potentially in this game. Um, but I think Cucurella really showed something against Everton, and I think it's something that Thomas Tuchel can really jump off of and say, wow, you know, he moved the ball quick. He created one of our best chances. Chilwell did, you know, get the assist on the goal um, going to the box and getting a penalty. But I don't know. I think they brought Cucurella in for a reason, and I think it is going to be him that's going to get the nod um, against Spurs. So we've kind of gone through the lineups now, um, talked a little bit about what Tottenham like to do. So let's break into a little bit more of the tactical analysis of this game. So talking about the tactics that Chelsea are going to kind of deploy against Tottenham, I think they're really going to be having the lion's share of the possession. Tottenham really want to get you in a bad situation by pressing you, turning you over in the midfield, and going the other way. They definitely can operate against, um, you know, in their own ha in their offensive half. However, I don't think that that's what their game plan is going to be. Chelsea's going to be at home, first game of the year. Usually that means that the first 20, 25 minutes is going to be a lion's share of the possession. For Chelsea, they have to jump out on the front foot and try and get that first goal so they can kind of play with the lead because we know Chelsea, if they play with the lead, are a much better team than when they're down and have to score against a low block. If Tottenham score first, Chelsea could be in a real world of hurt because Tottenham will sit back, they will counter you, and they have the players to do it effectively. This isn't a going against Everton where they didn't have a striker, they had two young wingers, and it just wasn't a good situation. But Tottenham can be had. Their center backs are not as good as some people may think. I, I don't really know how people kind of rate Romero and, and Dyer. Um, I do think that there is some work to be had there. But now will Chelsea's attackers finish it is where it's at. So I do expect a lot of Mark Cucurella and I expect a lot of Reese James. I think that Reese James has been relatively quiet this preseason and relatively quiet against Everton. I think you will see more of him. Um, and I also kind of appreciate that he's going to be playing more of an inside position potentially as a right center back. Because if he can do that, he will not be so tempted to whip in crosses to nobody that's there. There's no Giroud in the middle. It's Sterling for the most part and Havertz, who's not the most physically dominating center forward in the game. So, Reese James on the inside can play a lot more passes that are going to go through the middle. They're going to be playing into Sterling's pace, Polisica's pace, Havertz's ability in the box. So, I think that's kind of where we're going to go from an offensive standpoint. Um, and really, I can't stress this enough, the key to the match for me is being strong in your build-up play and moving quick passes quickly. You're not going to be able to really sit on the ball and make turns and all that stuff. You have to move the ball quickly. And that's part of the reason why I think Cucurella is going to play because he is so adept to moving the ball fast, getting in and out of positions, and kind of linking with the midfield in the build-up play. Not saying that Chilwell doesn't, but Cucurella comes from the Barcelona system, and he's able to do that a little bit more second nature than Chilwell is, I think. So that's kind of the whole reason behind Cucurella playing, Jorginho not playing. We need to move up quick up the pitch. We need to be able to make quick, accurate, controlled decisions and not turn it over. I think Tottenham is going to come at us with a lot. I think they're going to try and get us in uncomfortable positions, they're definitely going to target Ruben Loftus Cheek um, as well as try and work through the middle to try and go at Silva a little bit. They're going to be pressing our midfielders, hoping that we turn it over. And that's just been the story of Chelsea's midfield over the past few years is turning the ball over. So it's not going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination, but if Chelsea can play a sound game, they can definitely get something out of it, and they should be looking to win. I think trying to aim for a draw would be setting yourself a little low because we have beaten them the last eight times. So despite their preseason um, accolades that they've been kind of been getting thrown at them as the next challenger to Liverpool or Man City, don't buy into it because we finished ahead of them however many years in a row, and 
at this point, it, it's kind of don't. It's not broken unless they break it. So we can't let that happen. We have to play a strong technical performance. So just like last week, we're going to hear from the opposition side, um, get their kind of thoughts going into the game. We're going to be talking to Brian Ireland from Tottenham on Tour. So please go ahead, look at their channel, subscribe to it if you will um, in the channel. That's awesome. I love to give the people that give me time on my show some support. So if you can, that'd be fantastic. So let's check out what Brian has to say, and then we will go from there. Hello there, folks. This is Brian from Tottenham on Tour. Been asked to do a preview of Spurs v Chelsea this coming Sunday. Really excited for this game. It's going to be a difficult one for both teams, I think. I think we're going to really get a sense of where each team is at. Spurs had a really good offseason, obviously, uh, bringing in players early, strengthening the squad, um, which is something that Spurs aren't normally uh, uh, no, don't normally do. So this was a massive kind of change for what what we uh, what we're used to at Spurs. So really good to see. Um, the club finally get behind a manager and uh, what better manager uh, than Antonio Conte that I know you guys are well aware of as well. Uh, he's, uh, you know, was, was, was incredible at Chelsea the short time that he was there. Unfortunate for you guys the way it went down, but fortunate for us that we've we've been able to bring him in. So um, the training methods, obviously, you know, uh, Spurs are going to be a very fit team. We saw that against Southampton. I recognize Southampton aren't the strongest team in the world at the moment. They had a pretty poor end of the last season um, and have uh, brought in a lot of youth into their team. So they're not, you know, up to, up to snuff yet. So it's not a good gauge of where we're at. So I think this game for Spurs and this game for Chelsea is going to really determine where both clubs are at um, and uh, what we might expect for the rest of the season uh, in that top six uh, race for arguably uh, maybe perhaps that third position, perhaps the second one. Q few key things here. Uh, Kane and Son did not perform that well son had a good game kane had a re an okay game but as far as their outputs concerned no goals a one assist from sunny um so two players that didn't tick but what we did see is the wingbacks come into play in conte system session had a great game uh, on the left hand side um dan kulishevsky who has been absolutely fantastic for spurs um had a really good game goal and assist on the right hand side not a, not in a wingback position but on that right side of uh, of the front three was very very good um, but it was nice to get goals from other places. We're not expecting them to get goals. Uh, interestingly, you guys, from my perspective, and I think from many, uh, any any fans' perspective, is your wingbacks are arguably the best positions uh, you have as far as depth's concerned, especially bringing in Cucurella in the offseason. Very good uh, player to bring in for, from a depth perspective. Um, but injury problems last season started really well. And, and you know, when, when you lost your wing backs, you sort of lost the, 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 the fervor that you had when it came to uh, going forward and getting balls in the box and, and uh, scoring a lot of goals from those areas. Um, so it's going to be sort of a battle of that, those two systems, very similar three at the back two on either side. Interestingly, what I saw um, I, with the Chelsea Everton game, I saw a Chelsea team that didn't quite look together, um, looked a little bit disconnected, looked a little bit, um, you know, just not quite, not quite there, quite with it. Um, the, like you'd expect a Chelsea team to be not saying that they won't get there. Cause I think they will. Um, I think there's too much quality in the squad, but you do seem to struggle to score goals. Lukaku last season, obviously struggled quite a bit. Uh, he's been, he's been sent out on, uh, you know, on loan for, for 10 million back to Inter, and you're sort of left without a nine, um, a proper nine at this point, but bringing in Raheem, Raheem Sterling, you know, experienced winner, quality player, not sure you're going to get the goals out of him either. Um, I think, if we're going to play Chelsea at any point in the season, at any time in sort of development with our squad and where your squad's at, this is the time to do it. I think Spurs will, for in a very, in a very rare case, because I recognize the the, the history, um, get a get a win over Chelsea. It'll be tight because um, I think Chelsea will be up for the game over and above what we saw against Everton last week, um, and I think we should expect something. Uh, a, a very entertaining game. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. But I think Spurs will, with our fitness, um, be better. And just quickly, before I end on the fitness note, I did notice Thiago holding his hammy. Koulibaly went off early uh, with um, with some problems with his, uh, with his with cramps, I think it was. Fitness-wise, I would be very worried for your center halves if neither of those players are available or if they can't play a full 90 because you're coming up against the best, currently the best front three in, in England. When it comes to statistics, Kane, Son, and Kulishevsky right now are, you know, it's, uh, you, you can't, it's arguable. They're, they're the best front three at the moment in the league. 
and uh, they'll be flying against Chelsea looking to get this result. So I'm um, really looking forward to it. It's going to be an exciting game. I hope you guys, uh, I hope you guys are ready for it because it's going to be a, a very intense Spurs side, a very fit Spurs side, Spurs side, excuse me, that are are ready to play, uh, ready to play Chelsea and uh, make up for last season's, you know, embarrassing results in uh, in, in last uh, last season, so January essentially. So, looking forward to it. Thanks for having us on. Uh, this is Brian from Tottenham on Tour. Like and subscribe. Hop on over to our channel. Looking to get to 5K. Um, things are going really well. But thanks for having us on and. Uh, uh, I want to say good luck, but yeah. Cheers. All right, so let's hear from the opposition side. We have Brian Ireland from Tottenham on tour, who's been gracious enough to give us a few minutes to talk about what the Tottenham side is thinking about this huge London Derby. Kick it to you, Brian. All right, thanks, Brian. I really appreciate it. We don't wish you the best of luck, but thanks for the video anyway. Um, so I think it's going to be an interesting game from the jump. Chelsea, I think, should get the lion's share of the possession in the game. Tottenham will try to break. And overall, I think that Chelsea kind of play to their opponent. And I think this has been sort of a problem with Tuchel because you saw last year we would have a horrible game against a Brentford and then we would play Real Madrid and, and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Europe, now European champs. So what are we going to get? I think Chelsea are going to come out and they're going to play a good game. I think there will be goals in this game. I think it is going to be probably 1-1, one to -one, maybe leaning a little bit, maybe 58% towards Chelsea, 2-1. to -one. It's going to be a slugfest of two of the Premier League's heavyweights right now. Um, It'll be a, definitely a feeling out and kind of a measuring bar game for Chelsea and Tottenham because until they take us off our throne, we are the top dogs of London. So we'll see what happens. Be sure to like, subscribe to this video, comment, and we'll see you right back here for the match review on hopefully a Chelsea win. Thank you very much and have a good rest of your night.